to Kingdom Biz, Lord. Bless today's topic, Lord. That we may not only understand and share together, but be stronger together for the sharing, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Praise God, fellowship. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Amen. How you doing, family? How you doing? It always feels, it always feels like we float out of king out of worship. Doesn't it feel so good? Doesn't the peace of God feel so good? It feels like we just come floating, floating back home into the into this world. I came from we came from somewhere. We came from the secret place back into your home. <laughs> That's why when you open your eyes, you go, whoa. I'm back in the world. Oh my God, the peace of God had me so relaxed. We feel like we're somewhere else and we are somewhere else. We're in the secret place under the shadow of the Almighty and it just feels so good. Amen, family. Amen. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up if you can feel it. Give me a thumbs up right now if you can feel that presence still on us. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, family. Amen. Amen, Snurks. Amen. That's what it means. That's what it means when you feel the peace of God. Hey, Glenda, amen. That peace we still feel. We still feel it. We still feel the afterglow of the peace. That's the peace beyond understanding. That right there is the peace beyond understanding amen that's what it's all about just let go and let god have it let go and let god have it amen and king of the biz part three thursday is so exciting because we have three things on thursday we have praise jazz the first part second part is worship and third part is kingdom business and for those who are new kingdom biz means what we share with each other we share our testimony with each other i give you a topic and then we share the topic with each other and how we deal with the word in the situation. And for those who are new, that's what Kingdom Biz is. We get to share with each other. So that means you talk, I read what you're saying, and we share with each other on the screen. And for those who don't have a screen, I read what you post. Now the rules, remember the rules in Kingdom Biz is when you share, share the most important part of your testimony. And then if there are a lot of details, Share the entire thing under this video in the in the archives. So, so give me the main point of what the testimony is, and then all the details are in the archives under the video, so I can read and respond to every comment. Amen. So that's how we want to deal with the 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 extra sharing. Amen. So today's topic Monday we talked about we talked about Monday God's plans versus your plans. I should say, yeah, yeah, let me see, let me, let me, let me quote that, let me quote that exactly what, it, what my, my this topic is. <laughs> Monday's topic, we're talking about our plan versus, but it was your choices, the actual title was your choices versus God's plan. And many times, God has to take us off our road to put us on the right road that he has for us. So today's topic is, today's topic is sharing when God changed your plans. When God changed your plans. The testimony I want you to share is when was, what part of your life were you ever on a road in what you want to do and then God put you on the right road of what he needs you to do and then what he needs you to do is still good for you. The thing I always want to make clear is God's plans, like I said in Jeremiah 3, 11. God knows the plans. God knows the plans he has for us. We don't. We don't know the plans, but God does know. That's why in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he, he will direct your path to the plan he has for you. Not your choices, not your choices, his plan for you, which is still good for you. His plan is still good for you. So for some reason, for some reason, people in the flesh fear that God's plan is going to be something you hate. I've heard it. 
I mean, I don't know. I know. I know what God. I don't want. I don't know about God's plan because it may not be what I want. <laughs> what? A, hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. I don't know about God's plans. It may not be what I want. What? What do you? Wait. Wait a minute. Wait. A minute. There is no. There is no choice. There is no choice. Your plans without God lead to a. But with God, with God, your plans are blessed and protected and directed not only where he wants you to go, but he blesses you all the way to and through the plans he has for you because you're on the right road. I say it all the time. And that's why I said, that's why this topic is, when have you ever found yourself on a road that you want and then God changed the plan and then once you realize it, you look back, you look back and say, man, I'm so glad God changed my plan. See, you, you recognize it when you look back. When you're in it, you don't see it. When you're in it, you feel like you're being punished. Why is God taking me this way? Why is God taking me this way? You get upset, you get mad at God because you think God is taking you somewhere you don't like. When you're in it, when you're in it. But then when he takes you to the right place and you look back, you say, man, what was I thinking? I'm so glad God saved me. I'm so glad God be put me on the right road. <laughs> so in your sharing, think back. Think back. Do, 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 do. Think back to a twilight zone now. <gasps> Go back in time and think about the time you were on the wrong road and God had to reach down and put you on the right road. And now you look back and say, thank you, Jesus, you put me on the right road. But I was going... Nowhere, mighty fast. <laughs> I had to steal it. I had to steal that phrase from, from Star Trek. Some of us are going nowhere. Someone, some of us are going nowhere, mighty fast. Nowhere, mighty fast. I love that phrase because you don't know where you're going. God knows exactly where He's taking us. He knows exactly where He's taking us and what He wants us, us to do when we get there. We think we, we 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 make plans. Yes, we make plans. And we prepare, and then we go in the direction we think is right. But if we use, if we pray to God, He takes your plans, He takes your plans, and things you're working on, and then He blesses you and puts those plans that you have, your plans you have. He puts you on His road with your plans in His direction, and now your plans are blessed. Your plans are blessed when you let God have. Hey, Christian, when you let God have the plans. Don't fear it. Don't fear God's going to fail you. No. He's taking what you're, you're working so hard. You're working so hard on your plans. But then let God bless you by showing you how to go through your plan. Your plan. When you give it to the Lord, when you give it to the Lord, He takes your plans and takes your plans and puts your plans on His road, which not only blesses you, it blesses you and others who are blessed by you. In your plan without God, without God, your plan is trying to bless just yourself. But when God blesses your plans on his road, it blesses you and others who are blessed by whatever it is he has for you. Your talent, your whatever, whatever your gift is, it's all about your gift. He's given all of us a gift. And he wants to use our gift to bless people. Don't rebel. Don't rebel because God's trying to take your direction. Take your gift, your plans, and let God bless you and lead. let him lead you where you need to go. So many people resist. So many people think God is taking you somewhere you don't like. He's never going to take you somewhere you don't like. He gave you the gift. He gave each of us the gift to be a blessing. And for some reason... We think the gift is ours and want to take his gift to us in our own direction. He blesses each one of us with a gift, a divine gift, a God-given talent. Whatever your gift is, whatever your gift is, is not just for you. Whatever the gift God has blessed you with is not just for you. It's to use you, to bless you and those who need what he's blessed you with. Whatever it is, whatever it is, he's going to use you. We say it every day. He's going to use you. You're blessed.
to be a blessing to others. So he blesses you and others when you're on his road, not your road. We have no idea who to bless by yourself. But God knows exactly, God knows exactly who needs your blessing to be blessing. He, got, he knows exactly who to bring to you to bless with your gift. We have no idea. So when we trust God, when we trust God and let him lead us, then we're blessed and they're blessed. Amen? So that's what that's the example. That's the explanation of what I'm trying to get for you to share. When when you share, when was it that you realized that God's word is better? D these are different variations. I'm giving you, I'm giving you different ideas of what to share. You can either share when you had the epiphany, I'm on the wrong road, let God have it. Or did you say, Man, why did my life change? Because God stepped in. See, there's many ways. Your responses can be many ways. I just want to know when God moved in your life, when you recognize, man, God's ways is much better than my ways. That's what we share. I, I give you a perfect example. I, okay, I'll always start. I give you an example. I'll start first, and then you get ready. Get ready. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you before way in college. In college, there are two things. In college, there are two things I want to do. I want to either get pro football or I want to be a martial artist in movies. And, and those two things went completely... <laughs> he took me a completely different direction. He took me away from pro football and I, I did martial arts, but he took me away from martial arts films. And so I look back and I look at all the people I know who did martial arts films and the amount of injuries they have right now because of all the fight scenes they do over years, talk about pain, body rack with pain, you're acting like you're fighting, but all those years of action movies took a toll on their bodies. I look back and say, man, I thought that was fun. Well, maybe maybe God said, I'm going to use your drama. I'm going to use your emotions to be a good actor. I, I know you like physicality, but I'm going to take your emotions and use your emotions. And then you'll be able to teach people as well. So he took my teaching gift, school teaching. I taught martial arts. I taught Tai Chi, a personal trainer. So he took my teaching and said, look, I gifted you with teaching. Now let's teach the word of God. So I've been teaching all my life. I've been teaching something all my life. But he said, I'm going to let, I'm going to use your gift of teaching. And now I want you to teach the word of God. So I've been teaching all along. And one of my gifts is teaching. So I'm going to say, why, why am I going to be a teacher? Why God? Why? You've been teaching for years. Now teach the word of God. I'll tell you exactly what to say. I'll tell you exactly every topic. You just be obedient. You be, you be obedient. Be ready to teach. And I'll give you every lesson. How hard can it be? Don't freak out. I'll give you every lesson. Just trust me. When I did that, I've never had to plan for any lesson. He's given me every single lesson we've done on Gold Nuggets, every lesson. I've never had to worry about a single lesson because when he said that and I trusted him, he's given me every single lesson. And that's 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 why I realized, why am I stressing? Let me just go where God's going. Let me, let me just relax and let God have it and let him give me lessons. Let, me, let him show me where to take the channel. Let him show me where to take the ministry. Stop stressing and try to figure it out. Let God take me where I need to go. And that's what's happened with the channel. Everything with the channel. He's guided every single thing on this channel. And I just do what he says do. When I realize, stop worrying about it. You worry because you're trying to figure out the world. You're trying to figure out the world. Let me have it. Let me have it. And I'll take care of the channel. I'll take care of the lessons. I'll take care of the people who come into the channel. I'll take care of everything. You just do what you do, teach the word of God, and I'll do everything else. And that's basically the history of this channel. That's basically the history of this channel. Amen. Your turn. Now go back to Glenda. Glenda, even though I was in church, God removed me from that church into a new church where my healing started to take place. And now he uses me to help others who need support. Amen, Glenda. A perfect example. He removed you from one church and put you in a place another church 
where he can use you to be what? To be a blessing. Not only for your healing, Glenda, not only were you healed, but he used you to support others. Another perfect example, a perfect example, when God said, no, I need you over here, not over there, I need you over here. And when we obey, when we obey, when we obey, we are blessed for the obedience. Your obedience is blessed. The word says it. He is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. If you obey the Lord and you obey the Holy Spirit, you are diligently seeking his face because of your obedience. Again, I don't pick up, I don't pick who help, I don't pick who to help. They choose me. Amen. Exactly right. Exactly right, Glenda. They come to you. All God needs, all God needs is a willing heart. Amen. Hey, Christian, how can I ask for direction and actually receive an answer? Now, Christian, if you look at your life, many times God is already talking to you. And I, I'm glad you asked that, Christian. Let me say it again. Your question is, how can I ask God for direction and actually receive an answer? God usually gives you an answer before you ask the question. Let me say it again. God usually answers the question before you ask it. He's already moving, Christian. Something he's doing in your life right now. You haven't seen it. You haven't paid attention. He's using it right now. There's something you do well. There's a gift you have. You may not even pay attention to it. There's a gift you have in you that touches others. It could be it could be a listener. It could be an organizer, a performer. Whatever it is, if you take take the time, don't answer now. Christian, take the time right now and think about what in your life that you do that is very easy for you. And people say, man, how do you do this so easily? And people are impressed by what this is you do well. Because that whatever it is you do well is your God-given talent. And people are amazed how you do this so easily. Man, I like what you I like how you do that. And something in you is blessing people when they come to you and say, man, that's amazing. That's incredible. How do you do this? They have no idea, but you do because it's your gift that God has blessed you with to be blessing others. And when you take that gift and talent and let God use you, that's when the blessings come because now you're letting God use what he's given you. First, you have to recognize it. And, 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 and Christian, the first thing you do is, Lord, show me, Lord, Show me how you want to be, how you want to use me. And when you ask the Lord, show me how how to use me, Lord. Show me how you want to use me. As you ask that question, all of a sudden you're led to things like you're led to directions in your life that need your gift. It doesn't come like a big answer. It doesn't come in a lightning bolt. We, we we expect the answer to come, bam, lightning bolt, bam. Some people think the answer comes in a lightning bolt. No, the answer is all the way around you. God shapes your life. He shapes your life for the answer. You just have to find it, Christian. We just have to find the gift he's given us to be used. It's already in you. And you've already been using it, but you didn't know it's God's given talent to use you to be a blessing to others. So your answer is already around you. And when you take the time to think about it, you take the time and think about your life. What is it that I've done well they're so easy to me. And people are blessed by just watching me do it. They're blessed by my food, my cooking, my, my listening, my music, whatever it is, spoken word, whatever it is you do well that people love to see you do and you're blessing them as you do it. That's a hint. That's a hint, Christian. Amen. A snurks, I would say now I was determined to make my mark in a job location where I was. Now that he's moved me, I realize it's calmer and quiet so I can hear from him. Ah, amen. <laughs> a, 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 a fart tooth and nail. Oh, you want <laughs> amen, Snurks. You got now you have a Snurks. Now you have peace of mind. You thought you were in the other place seeking peace of mind, but then God moved you to a place where there was peace of mind waiting for you in the other job. So he took he took you from a job where you were looking for peace and gave you a job where there was peace already there and now you're in it, you say, thank you, Jesus, amen, um, Snurks, because I misunderstood. I misunderstood his guidance as punishment. 
for rejections. I wasted years thinking it was punishment where God was trying to take you where you need to be for you and for, other, for others. See, he needed to take you away from that job of stress. All those people were around you in chaos and fear and all this stuff, backstabbers and gossipers, all the gossipers you had at the other job, disturbing your peace. I remember you saying, I, I keep trying to pray for peace because there's so much noise in this office, so much spiritual noise, all the haters and backstabbers and gossipers, that's spiritual noise, spiritual noise that steals your peace of mind. But then he moved you away from the, the noise and gave you a job where there's peace be still. And you're still doing your job. Now your job is peace be still. And you don't have to look for it. It's already there. And that's a perfect example. Amen, sir. Thank you for so much. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. 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 Uh, Olga, always ask God to show the answer. Amen, Olga. When you can't find it, what the word said, ask and shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock. And will be open. Matthew 7. Matthew 7, 7. Matthew 7, 7. Ask. If you don't know. If you don't know. The word says it. Ask and it shall be given. Seek. And you shall find. Knock. And it will be open. But you, if you don't ask, seek, or knock. It doesn't come to you. It doesn't come to you. You go to it. You ask. You seek. You knock. To find the answer you look for. The answer doesn't say, hey, I'm here. The answer, doesn't, the answer doesn't come to run to you. Hey, hey, I'm your solution. Hey, I'm your answer. No, no. You ask, Lord, Lord. I'm asking, Lord. I'm asking right now. I'm seeking to find the answer, Lord. I'm seeking, Lord, to find the answer. And I'm knocking on the door, Lord, to show me, Lord. I'm knocking to show me which way to go in your prayers. So you're asking, asking for guidance, asking, Lord, I'm seeking an answer. You say, Lord, I'm seeking an answer. I'm seeking an answer to this. This prayer, Lord, I'm seeking an answer to my life, my job, my marriage, relationship, whatever it is you're praying for. Lord, I'm seeking an answer for victory. And when you keep doing that, that's knocking to say, Lord, all I need is direction and guidance. And then as you wait for him, once you pray for it, wait for the answer. Don't pray for it and stress out. No, pray for it and then wait. Some people pray in distress because it didn't happen automatically. Bam, like that. Those who wait on the Lord, what? Gain strength. When you wait on the Lord, you let the Lord know, I'm waiting, Lord, because I trust you. Because I know what the answer is, it's going to be better for me than myself. So when you wait on the Lord, when you wait on the Lord, the strength you gain is your faith. Your faith in God to know it's going to be all right. We sing it every day. Every time I walk, talk, pray, say, with Jesus, it's going to be all right. Amen, Jonathan. Sometimes the hardest part of faith is patience. Amen, Jonathan. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you said that. One of the hardest things for Christians, especially, is to wait. Wait on the Lord. To wait for your prayer to be answered. Don't stress you pray and wait. When you put a, 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 a you put a seed in the ground, an impatient person keeps digging open and looking at the seed. An impatient person, they put the seed in the ground every day. They dig the <laughs> they dig the seed up. Is it growing? Put it back down. Next day, dig the seed up. Is it growing? That seed will never grow because you keep working and disturbing it. But when you when you pray, you put the seed in the ground. And we, we know that if you water it every day, if you water the plant every day, and you pray every day, the, your seed, your prayer is being watered. And next thing you know, answers start coming. Blessings start coming. Direction, protection, whatever it is. And you start getting answers to the prayer that you pray for. But you got to pay attention by waiting and listening to the Holy Spirit that you know, here's a part of the answer. Now do this, do that. Follow my directions. I'll tell you what you, I'll tell you exactly what to do. Just wait. Don't 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 panic. Don't fear. Don't wait. Just wait. Just wait. Amen, John. Like a kid, <laughs> like a kid looking out the window every night until Christmas. <laughs> That's a good one. I love that one. A kid, 
looking out the window every day waiting for Christmas. So for 364 days, he's wasting time looking out the window for something that's going to happen until March 25th, uh, December 25th. So what's he doing? He's waiting impatiently and wasting time as he waits. If you pray and you know it's going to happen, you trust. And you do what, just go about your life, go about your life, and you live your life because you know it's on the way. You know it's on the way. Like for Christmas, you know it's on the way. You know Christmas comes. You know it's on the way. So why panic? Why look out the window every day if you know the date of Christmas? <laughs> it's not going to come any sooner. You can't change December 25th and make it come March 26th or February. when You, you can't make it change to what you want. If Christmas is December 25th, you wait until December 25th for Christmas. So thank you, John. Thank you, John, for that, that 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 parable because that's a very good parable in what waiting means. We know God's move. We know God answered the prayer. In the spirit, it's already done. When you pray, believe you have received it. Believe you have received it, and you shall have it. And how do you do that? By seeing it. If you're praying for something, please make sure you see it. If you pray for victory. What is it you're praying for victory over? See the victory. See yourself dancing for joy. See it. When you pray, believe you have received it, it's because you see yourself shouting. You see yourself saying hallelujah. You see yourself healed. You see provision. You see yourself, praise God, dancing for joy. You see it. You see what you're praying for in the spirit. And when you believe it, what you're seeing, you believe you have received it because you're looking right at it because you see it. As a man thinks, so he is, because you see it, as a man thinks, so he is, and you shall have it. Because as a man thinks, so he is, as you see it, believe it, receive it, and walk in it, and expect it, you attract it. Because you already see it. And you believe it and receive it. And now you expect it. We walk in expectancy every day. And make great answers, y'all. Great, 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 great answers. Praise God. So now, are you still, are you are you kind of understanding? We had some great examples, Snurks, a great example of Snurks and and Gary Glenda, uh, how God moves you. Uh, and I give my example when God moves you before you understand exactly why. A good one. God moves you from your choice before you even understand why He moved you. He moves you, and then you understand. But many people panic in a move. See, our flesh does not like change. Our flesh hates change. And we must know what's going on. The flesh always wants to know exactly what's going on every second of every day. Faith has no idea. We just have faith. And we know it's going to be all right. We know God provides. We know it. We believe it. We see it. So we know it. We don't see it. So by faith, by faith, we see the future. And you look much better than you look right now. By faith, we see the miracle and the healing. By faith, even before it's done, we see it. You got to see it. Believe it. Receive it. Expect it. Hey, Lori. See, we, we have to put these things in action to bring them to pass. So you shall have it. Fear, worry, stress, anxiety, that destroys your seeing. If you're stressed out in fear, worry, anxiety, it blocks your seeing. Because what you see, you see fear, anxiety, struggle, failure. You see that instead of your blessing. And as a man thinks so he is, that's good or bad. If all you see is negativity, guess what? You become negativity. But even if you go through hard times and you see victory, you attract the victory because what you see is not the hard times, you see the victory. You see the healing. Even when you're even when you're in pain, I do this every day. Even when my back and knees in pain, I see myself in the future. I look much better. I look right now. I see myself moving on my feet again. Even though my back and knees hurt every day, I see. 
One day I'm gonna be I'm gonna be marching until I'm blessed. I'll be standing up in my I'm blessed. I'll be punching, standing up, I'll be marching, I'm gonna be I'll be dancing with you guys, standing up, not sitting down. I see that. Even though I'm sitting in the chair right now, my knees and back are in pain, I see healing, victory. We don't look at what you don't look at what you're going through. Look at where you're going. Woo. Don't look at where you are right now. Look at where you're going. You're going to victory. You're going to healing. You're going to breakthrough. Don't look at where you are right now. Standing still. Failure. It looks it looks like failure. No, it's not failure. God is getting ready to move you. You're not failing something. It's not failure. God is ready to move you somewhere else. When you think failure, failure means you gave up. But when you go through hard times and you still see victory, that's not failure. Failure mean failure means you see negativity and you give up. That's failure. But if you go through hard times and it looks like failure, but you see victory, provision, and breakthrough, you're not failing. You're getting ready. You're getting ready for a testimony. You're getting ready for a testimony. Praise God. Oh, what you're going through right now may be hard, but guess what? I see myself in the future and I look much better than I look right now. That's right. That's why I had you guys write it down, make it plain. Remember, remember, remember the homework assignment. Write it down every day. Write your prayers down every day. Write it down so you can see it. Write the vision. Write the vision. Write the vision. Make it plain so those who read it can run with it. Write down healing. Write down breakthrough. Write down victory. Write down, I'm I'm blessed. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. Make it plain. So you read it. You read it. You think it. You hear it. Now you do it. And now you see the victory. And I look much better than I look right now. Because you took the time to write it down. And you speak it. You hear it. You think it. You do it. Write it down. Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Do it. Write it down. Speak it. Hear it. Think it. Do it. Write it down. Speak it. Hear it, think it, do it. And next thing you know, you are it. The next thing you know, you are it. It's come to pass. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Set, <laughs> set back a setup. <laughs> amen. The setback. We think, we, amen, amen. We think it was a setback, but it was a setup. For your next assignment, your next location. That's right. Amen. I'm glad that was a snurks in there. Amen. Yeah. 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 Amen, snurks. Amen, snurks. It wasn't a setback. It was a setup for your new location <laughs> to get you out of there, to get you out of that place, to get you away from naysayers, unbelievers, backstabbers, gossipers. Let me make it look like a setback, but let me set you up for a place of peace. Peaceful co-workers can pray, talk to the Lord as you work. Oh, thank you, Lord. I'm praying. I'm in a peaceful environment. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hello. Oh, praise God. You're having a good time now because the atmosphere, the atmosphere of peace is all around you. Before, before it was a war. <laughs> when you're in an office filled with negativity, you're at war for eight hours a day. Your spirit is trying to survive all the negativity for eight hours as you work. You praising, you praying, you rebuking, you trying to survive eight hours of negativity every day. And then God says, enough is enough. Let me move you to a place of peace. And now you can praise all day and feel my peace all day. You can say, so thank you, Lord. I love this new I love this new location. Oh, just peace. The peace of God is in a new location. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. No stress. I'm just resting. No stress. Just rest. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My new my promotion. My promotion to peace. <laughs> That's what it is. That is your promotion to peace of mind. We talk about it all the time. We talk about it all the time. There's nothing more important than protecting your peace of mind. And sometimes God says, the peace I give you. So Snurks, Snurks, your promotion to that other place was the peace God gave you to be at peace away from all the noise. Because what? 
He is a what? Rewarder to those who what? Who diligently seek you. Who diligently seek you. We seek your face every day, Lord. Amen, share glory. We seek, we just, we see it, we see it every day. God is a good God. God is a good God and he'll turn every single thing around. Life, family, home, health, finances, whatever it is. We just keep praising. We put on the garment of praise and just thank him. I thank God. I have learned to be content. And no matter what, I have learned to be content. Like word says. And the way you be content is stay connected every day. God never changes. God is what? The same yesterday, today, forevermore. So when we stay connected, we're praising him yesterday, today, forevermore. And we stay connected yesterday, today, forevermore. Because we stay connected. Amen. So now that was that was some great some great sharing now. Now, as we go for as we go forth, if you have some other testimonies you still want to share, put them under this video. And I do encourage you, even for those who came those who came last, those came, who came late, or those who are watching archives, uh uh please share, please, please share in the after on the under archives, amen. Us uh Lori asking for a miracle, God, amen. Amen, Lori. Lord, I pray for a miracle. Lord, I pray for a miracle. That's a that's a but God moment, Lori T. A but God moment is a miracle. A but God moment is a part of the Red Sea. You don't see it. They didn't see the part of the Red Sea. They didn't see it. Moses said, be still and see. Stand still and see the salvation. They had no idea what was happening. All they did, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then what happened? The sea opened. They had no idea. They just had faith. We must have Red Sea, part of the Red Sea faith. We must have part of the Red Sea faith, unshakable faith, to keep your eyes still on Him. When you need when you need a miracle, Lord, I need a miracle right now, Lord. I need a miracle right now, Lord. Move right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord, in advance for the miracle taking place right now in my life. Speak it as done. Speak it as done, Lord. I thank you right now for the miracle moving right now in my life. I speak it right now, Lord. I thank you because I see, I see the miracle. I see the victory. I see the breakthrough, Lord. I thank you right now in advance for the miracle taking place in my life right now in Jesus' name. That's how you pray for the miracle. You thank him for it. It's already done. Because when you pray, if you see the miracle, if you see the miracle, so we say, Lord, I thank you for the I thank you for a miracle. That means you see it. And he knows you see it. Because when you pray, believe you have received it. Believe you have received it. It's because you see the miracle. And you shall have it. Because as a man thinks, so he is. Uh Snurks, especially this last week, amen, you're more content, amen, Snurks, you're more content because what? The peace of God is at your new location. And whenever there's peace of God, you always feel more content because the peace of God, the peace of God, what? Will protect your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. That's why we feel, that's why we feel peace. Because the word says, Philippians 4, 6, 7, Philippians 4, 6, 7, be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, but let your request be made known to God. Tell God, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And that's why you feel, that's why you feel the perfect peace. That's why you feel it because you gave it, make your request be made known to God. Say, Lord, I need you right now. I need you, Jesus. I need you all day long. Oh, help me right now. Help me, Lord. Help me, Jesus. And you draw near to God. And when what? When you draw near to God, what happens? When you draw near to God, God draws near to you. Philippians, uh, James, James 4, 8. James 4 8. When you draw near to God, God draws near to you. When you pray, the, you're connecting. Every time you pray, every time you pray, you draw near to God. And the reaction is, God draws near to you. 
And that's where we feel the peace we feel when we stand still. Because every time you stand still, instead of fear, every time you stand still, instead of worry, anxiety, stress, every time you stand still, you're drawing near to God. And when that happens, God draws near to you and gives you more peace, more joy. To be able to make it through the storm, whatever it is, whatever whatever the storm is, he gives you the strength you need to make it through every storm because his authority is in there. His authority is in there when he draws near to you. And we must use the authority. I say it every day. Use your authority whenever you need it. That's why he gave it to us. To walk in victory. To walk in peace. To walk in healing. To walk in breakthrough. Whatever it is, he gave us the authority to use whenever we need it. Whenever we need it. Amen, Mike. Hey, Mike. That's right. Speak it, hear it, think it, do it. Speak it, hear it, think it, do it. Every day. Every day. Because when you do that, you keep the devil out. The devil wants to introduce doubt. But if you do every day, you take the word of God. Every day, the word of God. Every day, the word of God. Speak the word of God. Hear the word of God. Think the word of God. And then do the word of God. Speak the word of God. Hear it. Think it. Do it. And then as you live the word of God, the devil can't touch you. Because you live in the word. As we sing every day. Because you live the word. Speak the word. Hear the word. Think the word. And then live by the word. And you can't be touched. Yes, the devil. Yes, you're going to be attacked. Yes, you're going to be attacked. The devil is going to try to attack you every day. But when you use your authority to rebuke it, bind it, and cast that attack away from you, you use your authority to walk in victory over every attack. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what the attack is. It doesn't matter what the attack is. Use your authority to rebuke it, bind it, and cast out that attack. Name the unnamed, seen the unseen, back to the pit of hell from which it came. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. <laughs> Father God, we thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this day, this day of worship and praise and kingdom business, Lord, and sharing, Lord. And we, as we leave this place, Lord, we say thank you, Lord, right now. We thank you right now, Lord. Thank you right now for revelation and guidance you've given us today in sharing in kingdom business, Lord. Help this lesson, Lord. Help this lesson be a blessing to all those who don't understand what's happening, yet they may understand that God is doing something in their life. Lord, please reveal to them, Lord. Reveal to them what you're doing in their life, Lord, so they may understand that it's not a setback. It's a set up for a promotion to where you want us to be. And we thank you, Lord, right now in advance, Lord. We thank you in advance for that transition, for that blessing, for that miracle that each person is praying for right now, right now. Father God, right now, I pray this intercessory prayer over the fellowship right now, Lord. Lord, you already know what's on the heart of every fellowship member right now. I pray this intercessory prayer over the fellowship. I stand in agreement with every prayer request that each person has on their heart. I stand in agreement with prayers for healing, prayers for loved ones, Prayers for victory over situations, prayers for breakthrough, and whatever it is, Lord, every other prayer request, unspoken, Lord, I stand in agreement that every prayer request shall come to pass. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And before we close, before we close, I know someone's watching right now who doesn't understand why this why this fellowship is always on fire. Why this fellowship is always on fire coming together around the world and praise and worship and fellowship. But someone watching right now doesn't understand this kind of fellowship and how we support each other. So right now, I'm going into the prayer of salvation. As always, please, no typing until after closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted. I respect for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening. And you've been here the whole time. And you heard the praise and the intense jazz praise and the prayers and the sermon. But right now you can't connect because right now your life is falling apart. Were fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. 
Families turning away from you. Friends stabbed you in the back. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow, somehow you find yourself on this channel, have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you because God sees what you're going through right now, physically, spiritually, emotionally. And that's why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you, cho you chose to leave, to leave the word of God and go back to sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the devil's world. And now the devil is telling you once you leave God or fail God, you can never go back. And that right there is a lie in the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you said the prayer of salvation and then fell back into sin, there is nothing the devil can do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life, recommit your life to Christ, and there's nothing the devil can do to stop you. So right now, you're backsliding, you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with depression and worry and stress and hopelessness, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Either way, pray with me, repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior. And I commit right now. I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life. But I'll lift up to you first. Create me, Lord, a clean heart. And remove from me anything and anything. That's not like you. In Jesus' name. Now, if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us to teach us, to guide us, and also convict us when we are not walking God's will. The Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend Time with God every day. Not just every Sunday. Every day. Spend time with God. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh. Feed your faith. Starve your doubt. Every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life, which is God letting you know it's going to be all right. God's got this. God's got you. Right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we as a fellowship rebuke and bind the spiritual retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, and every other demonic spirit, named unnamed, seen unseen, who may try to attack anyone in this fellowship because of their participation in this fellowship. And we cast all you demonic spirits out of our mind, out of our spirit, out of our home, out of our kids, back to the pit of hell from which you all came in Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy. Loose peace beyond understanding. Loose restoration, Lord. Restore. Restore every area of our life, Lord. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil's attack, Lord. And Lord, please give your protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart. But who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. By your strike, we healed. And we confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. I believe I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Confess it and thank him. Confess it and thank him every day. Pray as if your life depends on it. P U. S-H, pray that something happens. Loose, supernatural overflow. Financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessing, Lord, your blessing, abundance, rain down, Lord. Rain down on a fellowship, every financial need, whatever it is. For you to supply all our need according to your riches in glory. But Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, I shall not want for anything the Lord is my shepherd. Let's say this part together, family. Repeat after me. For I am the head, not the tail. 
I am above and not beneath. I am the lender and not the borrower. I am blessed going in and blessed going out. I am blessed that I may be a blessing to others. I am out of debt. All my needs are met. I have plenty more to put in store. I am a child of God. And nothing shall any misery me or block my blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. We thank you for a miracle. Each person here has a miracle to pray for right now. And now we know every day, every day we take time to see it, believe it, and receive it every day. And once you receive it, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But because we don't know when, that means any day you wake up, any day, could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect your miracle every day. May the Lord bless you keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord set his face and divine approval upon you and give you peace that you may be a blessing to everyone you touch and speak to, a blessing to everyone you pray over, a blessing to everyone you pass by, and bless when I open your mouth because our love and light of the Lord is all over you 24 7, 365, including leap year. So, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. The fellowship say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah.